Okay, so I'm going to do a, a brief video here on what is the parallel axis theorem and, you know, how do you use it to figure out um, the um, moments of inertia for a rotating object. Okay, the best way to do this is to do it with an example. So we're going to start with just a metal bar like this. And, of course, the center of mass of that metal bar will be right there. We're going to say that the, set, the metal bar has a total length of L. Alrighty. So the first thing we're going to t talk about is that if this object was rotating about the center of mass, right, meaning that if you would imagine this rotating, it's kind of going like that, like that about the central point here. Well, that is... Uh, I'll do it in black here, um, that the I, if it rotates around the center of mass, is given as 1 12th ml squared. And that's, remember that these are usually given um, either by tables or just flat out given on a problem. Um, it could, because in order to, to, to derive these yourself, it, it's calculus, and they're not going to require that. So this is given. However, let's pretend, though, instead that... What if it's not rotating about here? What if it's actually going to rotate? Uh, you know what I think I'm going to do? I'm going to change my mind. I'm going to redraw this. I was going to do it all on the same stick. I have changed my... Whoa! Okay. Changed my mind. And I've changed my mind about allowing this terrible line to stand. That will not stand. <laughs> okay. Um... So as I fix this thing right here, what I'm going to talk about is I'm going to uh, redraw this with a new axis of rotation, and we're going to do it in blue. The center of mass is still going to be the center of mass. It's still going to be right there. But instead of rotating, I'm still laughing at that. Instead of rotating about that position, let's pick an end. It's going to rotate about this very end spot right there, and let's call this A. So it's going to rotate about that. So <clears throat> instead of, whoops. The gods do not want this video to take place because it actually turned off my microphone the first time I did this video. This is the second time, actually. Um, so instead of rotating about like this, we're going to imagine that this bar is actually rotating ooh, all the way around like that. You know, So <clears throat> you can just, just think conceptually here that the resistance to motion is, called, is the moment of inertia. This system right there, where it's rotating about position A, that... I bet, and just conceptually, you would imagine that, that there's going to be a lot more resistance to that rotational motion than there would be a rotational motion, motion about the center of mass. You could just imagine, like I said, just imagine in your head that it's, it, there's going to be a lot more resistance for point A. So the way we would do this with the parallel axis theorem is, first things first is we're going to define the parallel axis theorem that says that the moment of an, uh, the, the rotational moment of inertia about any point, and we'll just call it A because that's what we call the other one, is going to be the moment of inertia about the center of mass plus some additional component. And let, I'll come back to that additional component in a second here. So let's take, go back now to this uh, point A. That if you want the, ro the total moment of inertia, if it rotates about point A instead of the center of mass, you need to know what is the moment of inertia about its center of mass and now we're interested in, okay, how far away is this new axis of rotation from the center of mass? And in this case, it's going to be L over 2. And that's the new distance away. So this MD squared, D really refers to, the di again, the distance away from the, uh, the, the center of mass. And so that, in this case, is going to be L over 2. The stated uh, moment of inertia for a metal bar is going to be 1 12th ml squared. So now let's combine these terms right here. We're going to have the total moment of inertia being equal to 1 12th ml squared plus m l over 2 squared, which means we're going to have 1 12th ml squared plus 1 4th ml squared common denominator of 12, so that means you got 1 12th plus 3 12ths is 4 12ths, that's 1 third 
So the I is equal to ML squared all over 3. And you can see that that moment of inertia is significantly higher than just simply 1 12th because, again, it, it should be higher because there's going to be more resistance. Um, so that is one way we can do this. Let's, let's pretend we're going to do this next one in pink. And if you don't mind, I'm just going to save a little space. I'm going to do it on the same one here. What about if the axis of rotation was right here? It's not actually at the middle or at the end. It's sort of uh, in this little halfway in between spot. In this case, um, if it's halfway, that distance will be L over 4. So uh, if you were in class, I would ask you to pause for a second and, and ask, will the moment of inertia for point B be higher or lower than A? Another way of saying it is, is it, is it going to be easier to get it to rotate at point B or less? Well, hopefully the answer is pretty obvious that it should be, e whatever we get for B should be lower than one-third ml squared because it should be easier um, to rotate at about point B. It's the easiest at the center of mass, but it should be easier at point B. So let's just do this now. The moment of inertia at point B is going to be this. Okay, now the d squared for this case is going to be L over 4. Uh, so now we're going to have 1 12th ml squared. Now that doesn't change. Remember, that's just the given for the metal bar. It's really the second component here that changes. It's going to be L uh, over 4 squared times m. And so now we have 1 12th plus 1 16th. Let's do a common denominator of 48. So this is going to be 4 48th ml squared plus 3 48th ml squared for a grand total of 7 48 ml squared. That would be the total moment of inertia about if its axis of rotation was, was B. And yeah, that's, that's significantly less than 1 third ml squared, um, but not quite as low as 1 12th, which would be the minimum rotational inertia if it rotated about its center of mass. So that is how we would use the parallel axis theorem. Um.